Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today it's time to get creepy, it's time to get ghouly. We're going to talk about painting ghoul flesh. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Now I love painting flesh in general. I think it's a really interesting, fun experiment. You get to play around with different colors, soft tones, a lot of different transitions. It's really something to do if you want to improve. However, undead flesh can sometimes be challenging because we have to work in these unusual different tones. We need to make it look alive enough to read as like a being up and walking around the world, but dead enough to look like some carrion corpse eater that's harvesting the bones of the fallen and scraping the meat off of them for sustenance. Sounds fun. So today we're going to paint the new uh, special edition Ghoul King uh, that came out from GW. Uh, this is a super cool model sitting on a throne. I couldn't resist painting it. Uh, he is just awesome. And we're going to talk about the skin. Uh, so let's head over to the desk, see what we can do. Let's get started with the actual paints. And these are going to be a bit unusual. But I want to explain why. We have this rotting flesh from War Colors Nostalgia. We have two scale 75 colors, Resurrection Flesh, Rain Eater Azure, and then Dark Flesh. A greenish tone, a pinky skin tone, a purple tone for shadows, and then a deep red to warm up the shadows. And we're going to use these to create something that really doesn't look or feel like much of any of them, but you'll see how it all works. Now, I do begin with just a little bit of airbrush here. Uh, I'm being very directional with this, lighting it mostly over his top right shoulder. Um, the nature of how the figure is leaning forward and in this chair uh, does very much behoove this sort of directional lighting. I don't go super strong with it in the execution of the mini, but this is one of those minis, if you've watched my previous videos on doing like extreme lighting, this would actually work really well for that sort of thing. I'm also then gonna go ahead and colorize the shadows with this dark flesh with the airbrush. This is just really sort of erasing the deeper dark gray black that's remaining and, and toning it. Basically none of this red, this pure red will remain, but since our highlight is going to be that cold rotting flesh, that cold green color, I want our shadows to be nice and warm. All right, that's all the airbrush stuff. You wouldn't have to do that with airbrush. Let's get to the actual painting. The first thing I'm gonna do here is set some just general shadows. And I'm, so I'm covering all of that red and a little more with a thin version. So this is still a layer of paint, but it's quite thin. It's still transparent. The scale 75 fantasy and games colors are all quite transparent. And I'm, so I'm covering the shadows in a little bit more with a mix of purple, this purple and the red. And that's really my actual shadow color. Right? And I'm just relying on the warm red to sort of tone that up and keep the shadows warm. My next step is just very simple. It's just two thin coats of Brain Eater Azure over the whole model. Now, I don't cover necessarily the deep shadow areas, but everything that still doesn't have a color and into some of the area I just painted, uh, again, just two thin coats. And now he's a little happy purple man. So here's our happy purple man. And I promise you when we're done, he's not gonna feel like this much anymore. But when you're building up skin tones, you really have the ability to start at a color that isn't going to be what the final color is. It's gonna feel very different, but you can use those initial tones that you're gonna put a lot of layers over to just kind of set the warmth the environment, the temperature, the feel of the miniature, knowing that you're gonna do lots of layers up. And on a small figure like this, it honestly doesn't take a lot of time. But what I'm doing here is working up the actual sort of main mid-tone skin tone building toward it. So I'm being pretty aggressive with this layer, but I am still leaving some of that purple around. I do want some of it, especially uh, in the deeper shadows because that purple is so important to that ghoul, to that undead flesh. That bruised, deep purple color just feels really, really dead. When, when humans see purple in skin, it doesn't feel good. It feels bruised, it feels dead, it feels sick. That's what we want. And I used that color you saw previously. I applied that multiple times. I applied it all over the muscle structures you saw, then did it again. When you're modulating with thin layers, as you see me doing here, 
I don't have to sim I don't have to change my paint mix necessarily to get a new effect. I can keep layering up the same thin color over and over again, intensifying it and increasing the opacity in certain areas to smooth those transitions. I really can't impress upon you enough the importance of multiple passes of thin transparent layers when you're working with skin without changing your recipe or your mix. Everything you see me do here, at least one of, you'll notice I go over it two, three, four times, building that up. Now, why the rotting flesh? I use rotting flesh with the resurrection flesh because it's green. The resurrection flesh is a pinky tone, meaning it has some red in it. Green is the complementary color to red. Both are highly desaturated. But the green help cuts, it helps to cut the pink and it introduces a dead gray tone into it, pushing my highlights into both a pseudo normal flesh tone by mixing that neutral together while also making it feel just a little dead, a little gray, a little ghouly. Now remember, I can't reinforce enough that the particular paints I'm using here aren't the important thing, okay? What matters is using these kinds of different tones. And you see how I'm shifting the pink with this light greeny tone. How I'm incorporating those off purples to make the skin feel more bruised and dead. So it doesn't matter if you don't have my paints. Anything like in this color range in general, any, you know, soft purples, any off light greens, any pinky fleshes, all of those are going to work to achieve what you see me doing here. So now we're going to just work on the refinement. And the refinement means these final highlights. And here I'm coming in lacking any of the purple and just hitting those really key areas, those top highlights. This isn't over the whole figure. I'm focusing in on the top of his chest, the top of his shoulder, heating that original directional lighting. So where that knee is sticking way out, where his knee cap is there, right? Trying to really, really pop. So I'm expanding the volumes of this big lighter color up on the, the his, you know, sculpted chest. And uh, this dude really pushes some plates, I think, for being so dead. He's, you know, he hits the gym and, and good for him. The next step is just to bring, start bringing everything together. No matter how thin and transparent our layers are, they're still not going to be perfect. It's acrylic paint, and acrylic paint isn't made for blending. Uh, so we have to go to thin glazes. And so all the rest of this work is just me taking some of the various layers that I've had, thinning them down to a glaze. I'm working with the same mixes that are sitting on my palette. I'm just introducing some more water, thinning them down, and then pushing the paint in the direction I want it to go. Notice when I push these highlights, see how my brush is moving towards the area that I want the light. That's because this glaze is so thin. And remember, with our glaze, we thin it down, we wick off the excess, and then we move our brush toward the highlight area, toward the area we want the most paint to deposit. And so that's how you'll see me sweeping my brush here. And all these glazes back and forth down into the purple and up into the lighter tones in various mixtures, it really is just me moving around the previous mixtures, are just there to refine and smooth. I don't do a ton of this. This is meant to be a fun project, not, not really a competition piece. I could certainly spend hours more smoothing it out. But for me, this hit exactly kind of where I wanted, and I'm really happy with the sort of effect this skin produced. You can see how if I showed you the four colors, you wouldn't think you would get to this place. But by using the complementary nature of the green in the rotting flesh against both the reds and the purples, we produce something really unique and interesting. And there we go. He's all done. Let's roll some pictures of him over the top. Uh, this guy was super fun to paint. I really, really enjoyed this model. Uh, this is exactly what I needed to kind of kick up some good hobby mojo for myself. It's always fun to sit down, give yourself four or five hours tops to paint a mini like this, know it's a single character, and, and just experiment, have fun, play around with the colors, see what comes out of it. And I was really happy with the, the skin tone we achieved here. And I'll be, you know, trying this again in the future, maybe adding some additional tones or colors and seeing what we can get to. 
As always, thank you so much for watching this. Give it a like if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, there is a Patreon down below if you want to support the channel and take your next step on your hobby journey. That Patreon is focused on review and feedback and gives you a, a, a membership into an awesome Discord community full of enthusiastic hobbyists. As always, I thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.